welcome everybody to the service today. It's rather a special um, We're celebrating three events. We're celebrating Father's Day. So, happy Father's Day to all the fathers in our congregation. We're celebrating spring and we're celebrating 30 years of the opening of the temple which was on the 2nd of September. And as you can imagine, 30 years ago, this place was buzzing. We had Alana, who was then the Worldwide Lodge leader, and her two sons, Colin and Jeremy. We had Anna and um, Alana's personal secretary, Colin, and we had Los Angeles. In America, plus we had people from New Zealand and all over Australia, and it was just time. Helen was pregnant with her son, and there's only a few of us um, here today that were actually at the opening. Wim is one of them, and of course. Uh, Lynn, Christine, Helen, and myself. And we had such plans for this, this 30th anniversary. We had Rosita Hansen and her husband coming over from Sweden. Rosita is the deputy lodge mother, worldwide lodge mother now. And um, people were coming from all over Australia to help us celebrate. But we're here and we're going to celebrate. Now, the 30th anniversary is represented by the pearl. And a pearl represents wisdom, purity, and love. And I think that's really appropriate because they're all the qualities that we have within the lodge. So I would like to ask Christine now to open in prayer and the prayer for the, um, the Lodge. To inspire and stillness, we pray to become aware of the authority of the wisdom, the eternal truths, and of the powers within our being. We would be mindful of the needs of humanity, the needs on each plane of life, of all our brethren, so that we may assist God's work for the growth of His her spirit in all the children of earth. Amen. Grant, O oh loving kindness within us all, that those who work and those who worship in the Lodge may never mistake numbers, praise, or publicity for success may never strive for position when all service is valued and all are equal, may never seek for self, may preserve a kindly humour and go their way content to serve, may such a spirit of companionship abide as to silence all gossip and destructive criticism, so that all who enter Find enduring peace, true kindliness, and understanding. Amen. This reading is from Andrews, June 19. Section. 
The White Eagle Lodge came into being because it stands primarily for unity and embraces its teachings, many a school of thought. While embodying the teachings of theosophy, Christian and spiritual science, new thought and spiritualism, it would follow and advocate all paths which lead to truth. Thus the White Eagle Lodge holds no creed save unity with all, no other aim save brotherhood. The name chosen for the Lodge is designed not for the enhancement of any one individual, incarnate or discarnate, but as representative of a school or aspect of thought which might be symbolised by the white eagle, the bird of vision, of soaring wind, wings and sunlit skies. In this connection, it may well be to recall that the symbol of the eagle has always represented the mystical aspect of Christianity as embodied in the fourth gospel of St John. If it be loyal to itself, the Lord should seek to be a mystical church of spirit. Its mission to send forth such truth as has been entrusted to it. To hold nothing to itself, but ever seek to give. To place service before numbers, power or popularity in a world where service is desperately needed. Such a church is fulfilling itself if some who are lonely can find in it companionship and affection. If some who have lost faith can find a stable resting place again and the sick in mind or body can gain from its healing the health of soul and body. I think it's really important to hear those wise words from wisdom, um, from wise words from White Eagle to just reinforce what the light, what, oh my goodness. Last, last month it was, it was mosquitoes. Today it's, it's spiders. So I think it was really good to hear those words from White Eagle to reinforce what the Lodge is all about. So now let us join together and we will send out the light to the world. So now let us set aside all the thoughts of the outer world. And we, we focus our vision on the blazing star, the star of light. And we hold within that blazing star all leaders of the world, leaders in politics, religion, society, and the financial institutions. Within this blazing star, we hold all countries in conflict. And we see the light of the star pouring 
into the land, the people, and the leaders of these countries. Within this blazing light, we hold our beautiful planet. We hold the waters of the earth. The air. and the very soil of our earth. Within this blazing star, we hold the animal kingdom. and all nature within this blazing star we hold the soul of Australia the soul of the people of Australia We hold in the blazing light the soul of New Zealand. The soul of the people of New Zealand. And now in this blazing star we hold Anyone known to us personally who is in need of help or healing, silently we name them now. And we see them lifted, lifted into the heart of God. Perfect, perfect in the light. And in particular today, we hold the soul of Wendy Davis. Wendy. Elaine Chiong. Elaine, John and Sue Firth, John and Sue, Karen and David Hughes, Karen and David and their neighbour. And Ethan Thompson, Ethan, and we see these dear souls lifted into the light of the star, into God's light, God's love. Amen. Will you join with me now in saying the Lord's Prayer? The words are in your order of service. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord my God, when I in want of wonder, consider all the works thy hand hath made. I see the stars. I hear the mighty thunder, my path throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul,
thank you for joining in. That was lovely. Now, I forgot in the welcoming to share with you that five years ago, Beatrice, who's the group leader in Switzerland, was here with us, and she remembered our anniversary, and she sent this email with a beautiful bouquet of flowers and a yummy tart. So, hello, my dearest Gay and Lynn. Happy birthday to the temple and all who love the white eagle work. In my thoughts, I am firmly with you and I am happy. I send my best regards to everyone I know, even if it's not possible to be together. In the love of the heart, we are all one. With much love and light, Beatrice. So today, I thought that I would follow on the theme that Helen has started and share with you White Eagle's thoughts on the history of the White Eagle Lodge. This anniversary is a day of power, and we wish all who worship in this lodge to understand that they can contact a mighty power, that they themselves can feel this power and can allow it to manifest through them in any degree they like. In other words, the beloved supporters of the White Eagle Lodge have it within their power to become masters of life, masters of their soul, and within their power to unfold inequalities which will enable them to rise above the ordinary level of life and live in happiness and freedom. The White Eagle Lodge is a place which has come into visibility. Isn't that interesting? The White Eagle Lodge is a place which has come into visibility. Life is a circle without beginning and without end. The White Eagle Lodge has existed before. It is not a fresh institution, but something which has come over from ages past. Many of you have been associated with us in the past, although it was not called the White Eagle Lodge in those days. It was a brotherhood or a group of people working to bring to those who would listen words of truth and light. Today, you celebrate the anniversary of this present lodge. When you turn from the outer to the inner, into the spiritual spheres of consciousness, you will know that this lodge is eternal. And you will recognize that you have been attracted to it, drawn spiritually to a center of light and power. This lodge has certain work to accomplish. You, my brethren, are given an opportunity to labor with your brethren of the unseen to accomplish a mission which is set out in the divine plan. If you read the history of this little lodge from its inception, you will discover that the first and primary purpose of its establishment was to create a center of light 
in darkness and to help humanity through the years of fire. Now I just want to pause there because at the time this was given, everybody thought it was to help the humanity through World War II. But when you think about it, it's more than that. It's helping us to trans, uh, transition into the new age of Aquarius. And the, the present situation with COVID is all part of this transition. It's, it's a changing of humanity. It's a changing of us as individuals, as countries, and hopefully as parliaments. So, the first and primary purpose of its establishment was to create a center of light in darkness and to help humanity through the years of fire. Through the years destined to break down outworn and unwanted modes of life and to bring to mankind a vision of something better, of a nobler life filled with happiness, brotherhood and the riches of heavenly things. The purpose of this lodge is to bring this light to humanity. We do not want to evangelize, nor yet to convert people to our particular way of thinking. We want simply to help them to feel, feel the qualities of spiritual life and power gathered in this communal life of the White Eagle Lodge. The second purpose of this lodge is to help our brethren to develop the spiritual senses of seeing, hearing, feeling, and tasting the glories of the higher spheres. You contain within you the Godhead. And only when you know how to unfold and enter into this higher state of consciousness can you hope to harness the power which we call divine magic and use it for the blessing of your fellow creatures. Yours is a great opportunity and also a grave responsibility not to be treated lightly. Undertake such responsibilities with all your heart. Keep on striving to realize the glory of God's life and little by little demonstrate this power in your own life. Then you will touch the center of truth. You will become free from time and space. And you will live in the glorious eternal now, manifesting, demonstrating with every breath that God's children are God's in the making. It's a beautiful statement, isn't it, of what the Lodge stands for. And I only hope we can all live up to it. So now I'd love, Tracy, to talk with you. Isn't it wonderful? Springtime. 
But more importantly, I'd really like to take just a very short minute to thank every person that has ever stepped foot in this lodge, even though we are not in the temple or in the meeting room. We are all here together, but that everybody who has ever stepped foot and shared their love and shared their light and served in whatever way, be it so little as, as anything to as big as anything. Anyone who has walked in here has sounded their note, shared their love, received, left a little bit of themselves here, received something and taken it out into the world. And for that, each one of us really are very grateful. <laughs> and to those who have served here, who have passed, who are working on the inner planes. The teachings have been very gentle, beautiful, and bless each one of us without us even knowing. So, on a lighter note, <laughs> how wonderful has it been driving here this morning? All the little wildflowers are sticking their little heads out of the side of the road, waving as we drive by. by. The sun was shining so beautifully, so gently. There's a stillness and a hush that is so tangible at the time of spring. We've come out of the darkness of the winter, where there's long nights, we're asked to go within, to be still, to do less, and then it's spring, and all of a sudden the birds begin to sing brightly, a little bit louder and a little bit more happier. There's just this little bit of extra joy that takes place. The reptiles start to stick their little heads out around the corners under the rocks, the ones you want and the ones you'd like to hide from. And all the animals just become, and big animals, become so much more joyful and happy because when you walk outside, those westerly winds aren't there. There's just a gentle breeze that kisses your face that blows your hair ever so gently. It's such a wonderful time of the year. And why wouldn't the celebration of the Australasian Temple be in such a magnificent, uplifting, glorious, joyful time? Because I don't know about you, but every time I walk in here, that's what I feel. The most uplifting, heart-opening, joyful love I feel like I come home every time I walk in the door and somebody smiles. It's just the most wonderful, wonderful place. And Doris and Elf and Gay, Gay and Lynn, Steve, everybody who has been here and done what they need to do to continue this beautiful work, thank you. We also salute you from the deepest, deepest steps of our heart because we know how much work it is how hard you work and strive for humanity. So much unseen work here on a physical level, just keeping the temple running, but also the unseen work with the brotherhood, sisterhood and the world of light, holding the light for all to choose to open their heart and step into remembering the love that they are. It's always been there. Just remembering and why did his teachings show us? <laughs> so, there's one thing to remember that as we go to sleep, it's the optimal time for our breath to reset for our health to keep us on our right path, and to keep us on track. So along with sending out the light that we do, our tree of life, which is so nice to do outside at this time of the day as the sun comes up and breathing in that golden light and sending it forth, we're also 
would be asked to actually just take the breath in and ask to reset our soul breath ratio. And just asking it is enough for it to happen. A cough will help to reset it. Um, and there's also three crystals you can work with if you have them, which is amethyst, charite, and Botswana agate. But those three, resetting our soul breath ratio just brings us back into our, our peace and our balance. Because if we don't, things build up. When we breathe other people's breath, someone's upset, we breathe their breath, we lose a millisecond of just our own breath ratio. So resetting it brings us back to a balance. And it's springtime, doing the tree of life, sending forth the light, resetting our breath consciously really will help us to just get up and go every day. So White Eagle's words is on spring. And he says, open your heart to the sun. In the past, ceremonies were held at this time of the year when the sun was returning with its warmth and its life force to bring from the earth itself a manifestation of God's life and beauty. We would raise your consciousness beyond the darkness of earth life and bring you a vision of the company of the radiant spirits and angels who draw near your earth at this time in obedience to the Lord, to the will of our Father, Mother God. They come among you with rejoicing, trying to infuse into your being the joy of the sunlight, the joy of the Christ life. They try to awaken in your soul the higher consciousness, supreme confidence in God's love and wisdom. You may, if you will, receive the baptism of the Son Spirit even as the brethren of ancient wisdom have always received it. Turn your back, beloved brethren, on the darkness and the error of mortal thinking. On the lower mental plane there is confusion, and the one who dwells in the prison house of the flesh dwells in confusion. But the spirit within aspires and reaches forth to its father, mother, God and cries out in joy that it lives and has its true being in the heaven world. In this modern age, you have lost touch with the truth of being in God's light and beauty and good. Brotherhood, sisterhood is hardly known, but at this time of the festival of the arisen sun, let us all make a supreme effort to open our hearts to God the great sun of all life, and reflect its light into the heart of all people. The ancient festival of the welcoming of the sun at this season at this time of the year will be revived when people realize the true art of life. The sun, the life force which flows from the heart of God, which is love, will enter the fullness and richness into the being, into your being, in the same way as the sun enters the seed, quickened to life in Mother Earth. As nature is quickened by the same force of love, so you will be quickened and grow into perfection. There will be those days, not stricken men and women, but all will be as a perfect son and daughter. We believe in the coming of the brotherhood of the Christ on earth. We work for this end. So with the thought of spring, of joy and of love, shall we go into meditation? And before we do, that came, reading came from White Eagles Festivals and Celebration.
So just laying aside all the thoughts of the outer world. Coming very firmly under the star. And just breathing in that gentle golden light. And breathing it through the crown of your head. Through your skull. And all the way down through your body. Your neck. Your shoulders, arms, hands, fingers. Torso. Hips, legs, shins, calves, ankles, feet. And from your heart, seeing a beautiful line of light connecting with the flame in the heart of the earth. Feet on the earth. Heart wide open. Head, the heavens. Connect to the star from your heart. Beautiful line of light to the star above your head. And before you is a beautiful mountain path. And as you walk barefoot up this mountain path, you feel the strength of the earth beneath you, the gentle sun upon your shoulders. And with each breath you breathe in the life force and strength of the sun. At one with all life. And as you walk past the myriad of wildflowers, you feel lighter, more free, more radiant in the love and the joy that you are. With each breath you feel in your heart, freedom, Freedom to breathe, to breathe the solar life force. And at last you come before a beautiful lake. You wash your hands, your face, and your feet. And the most brilliant ray of light pours down upon the lake. And you take three steps onto the water of the lake and rise up the sunlight into the heart of the sun temple. And as you enter the Sun Temple, you see the Spring Festival, the wildlife, the animals, the deers, the butterflies, the fairies, the gnomes. You see children dancing, singing, twirling. You see and feel the joy that is there. You see brethren that you've known on this earth. And you embrace as a celebration of life. And all of a sudden, 
there is a hush and a stillness. And you sit upon the grass and you listen. You hear and feel the awakened Christ. In this remembrance of the light within you radiates the flame within your heart. It becomes a sun in your heart. And the excitement and joy is felt as you breathe and sit in your sun, in your heart. The joy expands through your heart into every cell. Joy for life. Joy for your life. And again, the party begins. And the laughter is sound forth, smiling from deep within your heart, the joy, the love, the light, the light is carried every day, in every way, in all that we do. And it's time now to say goodbye to those you love and slide back down that beautiful golden light back onto the earth, bringing all you have received through the crown of your head down to your skull with breath, your neck, torso, shoulders, arms, hands, fingers, down through your legs, your feet. Again, feeling the earth beneath you. Feeling the joy of the earth. The pulsation of the earth. The freedom to choose. Joyful, loving, happy life. And you wash your hands again by the water and your face. And you turn and walk back down the mountain path, bringing with each step even more fully your joy, your laughter, your light, your love, rededication to your life in the most fun-filled, light-hearted way.
and placing the symbol of the eagle sign across within a circle of light upon your heart. And stretching your limbs.
our clients. That you do. It's a bit terrible when you're a water sign. I would just like to acknowledge all the unseen brethren who are here today with us. Brethren who have supported this work throughout the ages. The angels and the masters for whom we work. So can we just for a moment, just from our heart's end, give our thanks for the blessing of all these brethren who work ceaselessly behind the lodge. And now I'd like to use White Eagle's words in the closing prayer. To the eternal God, silently, in our hearts, let us give thanks. And may our praise be expressed in the joyous living and caring with quietness of mind for the needs of every living soul we encounter. The needs not necessarily of the body, but the needs of the soul. Amen. Now let us join together in saying the best Father, we bow in humble adoration. Through lives of service, we would worship thee. Shine in our hearts, thou light of all creation, which word and art through all eternity. And to close our service, these are White Eagle's words. And just imagine him here with us, because he has been here with us today. Just imagine him standing tall, straight, so true, with those sparkling eyes. And he says to you, God bless you, my brethren. God bless you, everyone. God bless you in your search for happiness and truth, and in your search to give service to the world, and help your companions on earth to a happier state of life. Thank you. Thank you, each one. Thank you, Tracy, for those words. Uh, we really appreciate it. There are so many people that go to make up this lodge. And yes, we might be the face of the lodge, but there's the gardeners, the handymen, Byron has come along to help us. Nettie is and Ian. You all, the lodge wouldn't be here if it wasn't for everyone here. So we, and of course, our beautiful Helen, who helps us in the office. Um, yes. Um, She's the most important person because she looks after the finances. <laughs> and Christine, you're always here. You're always willing to help. Whatever we ask to do, as is Wim, at short notice, Wim comes over to help us. So thank you all. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Steve. Um, we're a team with those in the world of spirit. We are a team, and hopefully we will be here for long into the future. Perhaps Lynn and I are not in this position, but, you know, the Lodge will be here in the future. And exciting news, 
next service should be in the temple. Yay! So now we have a lovely celebratory cake to share with everyone. Sorry those who are watching on Facebook or um, on our website. Sorry you can't join in, but we'll have a piece for you. So thank you all for coming and being part of the lodge. Okay? Come on. <laughs>